Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for tuning in today. If this is your first time, you're welcome to the channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for tuning in. Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. This is your first time. We are trying to grow the channel. Subscribe to the channel and you know, let's grow and also share. All right, so today um, we have something for people that you know are visiting Canada and let's say after their visit they're like hmm I don't want I'm not ready to go back yet right <laughs> so we're gonna be sharing um how you can extend your visiting visa you know if you're visiting Canada and then you're not ready to go again these things are important to share because well coming from the kind of country that we are coming from where they are not get record no record right so you can do as you like and some you know sometimes i think about it somebody travels to by the way i'm from nigeria basically for you maybe you are just coming to china and you don't know if you know somebody travels to nigeria today and you maybe you're on a visiting visa and then it expires i don't know if there's a way they know or you can you just stay there and nobody would know i don't know maybe people that work in immigration and stuff maybe they might know but on the top of my head you know i don't know if there's anything like that i think people can just stay for as long as they like and whenever you're ready now you can go but that doesn't happen here in canada there's record right so generally like we all know if you are coming to canada you are staying for six months at a stretch that's like the general rule everybody knows so even though um i did the visa the visa they would give you would usually match the um validity of your passport so if you have like a five-year passport and then you are applying for the canadian visa, uh, visiting visa they would likely give you five-year visa right however you cannot stay more than six months at this stretch that's like the general rule right so but after your six months if you'd like to extend there's a way you can make that happen and that's what we're going to be sharing with you today what that is called it is called a visitor's record if you want to extend your visa it's called a visitor's record and before i dive into that i just want to share the reason why it's, it's actually important for you to do this um say for example you come to Canada on a visiting visa and um, it expires, right? You see, the thing about Canada is if you are driving, for example, and they stop you on the road and you're a visitor and your, um, your validity has expired, that might actually spell some trouble for you because <laughs> by then the police officer puts your information into the system. Bam, bam, bam. It will show everything about your life. The day you, they can almost get information. They will even get information the day you are born, say, because it should be your passport information. Everything you will bring out all the information, and then they would know. And then from there, that can easily lead to you know, them sending you back home or banning you from coming, or you know, it can can lead to so many things that we're not interested in having. So uh, that's this one of the reasons why we're looking to share this. And there's a legit way that you can do it, and it's by applying for a visitor's record. Now, there are ground rules that you must follow when you're applying for this visitor's record. There's a process that you have to follow. Now, one thing is you have to apply 30 days before the expiration of your um, six months. So, what that means is if you're coming to Canada in January, for example, the six months mark ends by June obviously January for magic we need to six months so if you are if you want to extend then you start thinking about applying sometime in May 30 days before uh, the six months mark so you're thinking about applying in May that's one thing that you need to take note of another thing is that as part of your application process you need to submit a proof of fund this is also one of the things they would normally ask you you know when you were um, providing your initial when you were doing your initial application to even get the visitors visa in the first place proof of funds 
And at this point, they're asking you again, the one that we processed before, you know, we, off the top of our head, we treated it as though you'll be staying for six months. Now that your six months is going to an end, we need you to show additional proof that you're going to be able to take care of yourself for that period that you're looking to extend for. So whether it is two months or whatever months, we need you to be able to show proof that you're going to be able to fend for yourself. They would, you know, ask for a proof of fund. Another thing is a letter of explanation, telling them why you want to extend. I mean, if you are saying you want to extend, okay, what is the reason? Right? So you'd also support your application with the reason why. Oh, what I've seen people or, you know, people here do, when they, especially for people that would apply, you know, for a visiting visa for their parents, if they want to extend, then most of the time, the reason would be, oh, you know, so they can stay to help us take care of the kids because we are working, blah, 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 blah. That's a common example that most people use. Now, that can work for the category of people you are extending for. Now, if, say, for example, you are the sibling of someone or you are a friend to someone, or, you know, whatever category, you know, your reason must study, it must judge, it must make sense, right? So you only look for a reason that that makes sense for your category or your brackets. So that, because again, some of these things, if you are in the younger category and then to even get the visiting visa as a young person, you already know it's a struggle. If they now give you finally and you're now wanting to extend, your reason must really make sense. It must geno, you know, so that the, the IRCC or the immigration officer won't start thinking, hmm, I mean, this person wants to stay, this person does not want to go back, you know. So you have to put your, you have to put your best uh, foot forward in terms of giving the reason why you're staying back. So that's another thing. The third thing is that this time around, something different from the initial application that you did the first time, you're going to be submitting medicals if you're looking to extend. And the reason is that now you're going to be in Canada for more than six months. Before, they did not ask you for a medical because, again, if you are going to stay under six months or six months, you necessarily don't need to. But this time around, they would ask you for, again, off the top of my head, I think about it and I'm like, I don't get the medical that you didn't ask me before, <laughs> you know, you didn't ask, you ask me for before. Why are you asking it now? As a have I, is it I've contacted one disease or so? What? Shasha, that's one of the things that you're going to need to provide. And these medicals, can be done up front or you can wait for IRCC to ask you to go and do it after you have submitted your um, application. Yeah, so that's uh, one other thing that you're going to uh, need. So once all of these things are complete, your proof of funds, if you're doing your upfront medical, your letter of explanation and your application form. So this thing again is called a visitor's record. You go on IRCC website, you see it there, you fill up the form, you submit your package. You can do an online application if you'd like, or you can do a paper application. Online application is always faster. And they also advise that you do um, an online application. And then you'd also pay an application fee. Currently the, applications fee, the application fee is $100 per, per, per application, right? So. You pay the application fee and then you submit. Now, the timeline for the processing is currently 70 days, which is about two months and some days. Uh, that is the current timeline for the processing of a visitor's record. But the good thing is, you, you know, you might have a question that, okay, so once I apply, they said I should apply 30 days before my 60 days is well, my six months is over, and it's going to take two months, you know, to apply. There's a possibility that I might run out of status because if you know IRCC very well, you know that processing application is not, is not I mean, in a, in a very processing application speedily is not their strength here. Even though they said the average time is 70 days, it can take more than that. So there's a possibility that you might run out of status, right? 
The good thing about submitting your application 30 days before is that once you have submitted the application, you automatically get something called a maintained status or status. Is it status or status? Well, whatever, whichever one you choose. So you get uh, that maintained status and you can stay in Canada until IRCC makes a decision on your file. Now, once they make a decision on your file, they will provide you with a visitor's record and then that carries the new date that you must leave Canada by, right? So it would carry a date. Say for example, you applied for the visitor's record uh, and um, in, let's go into the future, say maybe June of 2024. And then IRCC decides to extend for you for, I don't know, six months, one year. Say, maybe the, then the visitor's record will come and say, okay, oh, your new date to leave Canada, you came in in January, your six months was over in June. Okay, so we are extending for you for six months. The new date you are to leave Canada is now December 2024. That visitor's record will show the date by which you're supposed to now leave Canada. So, um, and the good thing about applying for a visitor's record based off of the experience that we've seen or this extension is, I ask they are usually generous with their time <laughs> or with their, you know, they're really generous. So they would likely extend for you for, I don't know, maybe six months, maybe one. It just depends, I think it depends on the officer who is processing your file. I mean, we've seen extensions of six months, we've seen extensions of one year. I think it just generally, I, I'm not sure they have like a specific timeline as to if you are extending, then the extension, the extension has to be for 12 months or it has to be for eight months. I don't think there's any ground rule or I don't know, I'm not sure, but just based on my experience, we've seen extensions of one year, six months, you know. So I think it generally depends on the officer who is um, working on your file. So that is uh, something that we thought we'd share with you guys today. If you're a visitor in Canada and you like the weather so much, you like the, well, some people say Canada is boring. I don't know <laughs> if you like, you know, I like the Canadians and you go or whatever, and then you, you don't want to go. You can extend right and that's a legit way to do it which i mean yeah who doesn't want to do things in a legit way so that's what we thought we'd share with you guys today and then with that we have come to um the end of the video another thing i'd like to say before we go is so this visitor's record is usually used by visitors you know coming to canada to visit uh, it can also be used by students who are allowed to study without a study permit and also um, people who are allowed to work in Canada without um, a work permit and looking to extend their stay. So basically it works with the extension of stay. That is um, what the visitor's record is for. Um, yeah, that's it for today. <laughs> We've come to the end of the video. Uh, please don't forget to do what? Share, like and subscribe again we'll be here uh next week same station same channel <laughs> don't touch the down see you guys in the next video bye bye